Hey guys, it's Caden and I was the video editor for a music video. Specifically, I like N High, Tommy Goes All The Remix by Run Rummer. I was contacted by a director to do a re-edit of the original music video, which I thought was a really smart idea to have a remix of a song and the remix of the music video. This was a great project to be a part of, um, so I want to thank director Nick Kane and Run Rummer, obviously for giving me the opportunity to do this. If you haven't seen the music video, then watch that first and then come back to this video because this is where I'm going to be talking about some of the effects I did and some of the choices I made. Disclaimer, I haven't done anything like this before, like a commentary about my work and I haven't used OBS before, which I'm using to record this video. I've started and stopped like a dozen times. So this has been hard to get right. Um. <laughs> So if anything does go wrong with this, um, it means it's gone worse before. <laughs> so yeah, let, let's get started. The first major effect I want to get into is data motion. So from the get-go, when I went to pitch my ideas for this video, data motion was at the forefront. It was the effect that I was most excited to use and it felt like it fitted the weird, trancey, um, like dance nature of the track, and also was wanted for the video. And it was, it was hard to get right, like consistently. But if I ever want to do this in the future, then I know what I'm doing, <laughs> basically. So to put it simply, data motion is when you have two clips, um, two different videos. The part where it cuts into the next clip, that frame is deleted the video recognizes itself as one con continuous um, clip, which is where you get that weird glitch from. The way I did this was using an application called Avid Emux. I don't know how you pronounce it, I think that's how it's spelt though. In simple terms, you have three different types of frames in video. You have I, you have P, and you have B. The first step is to get rid of the B frames in the clip. The next step is delete your I frame, which kind of determines like, oh, this is another different video. So get rid of that. And then that's it. And you have your clip, like, kind of go from one to the other continuously. That's how you get the data mosh effect. What I was doing wrong was I was exporting two clips as one video. It meant that I couldn't do that effect because that iframe didn't exist, even though it should have. What I needed to do was export two separate clips and then bring them together at a later date so that iframe is definitely in the place I want it to be. And so that's how you get the data mosh effect. It was annoying to find that I was doing it wrong at the very, like literally the very last minute, it still turned out like great. Um, I'm really happy how it turned out, happy that um, Liv liked it. That's shown throughout, of course, that was the main staple of the music video, like every effect was built around getting that same type of tone and feel. Even though it looks quite complicated, this effect was quite easy to put together. So as you can see on this screenshot here, there's four different layers here. It's all showing the exact same clip. So the layer right at the back is just your regular layer. The brightness was toned down slightly and just to show that it's in the background. The second layer, the brightness was left and it was just like smaller in the frame. Um, third layer, brightness was left again, another bit smaller. And then the top layer, the brightness was up a tiny bit to show it's at the forefront. And I animated where the anchor point is. The anchor point is always on the nose, I believe, in this clip. So the n nose stays in the center and then the video moves around it to compensate for it. The nose is always in the same place um, while everything else moves around it, like back and forth in like a loop motion. This is really easy to do, easy to get right. I really, this one, I remember just making it up as I went along. I just thought like, okay, how about if I make this smaller? Okay, how about I make this smaller again? Okay, how about I have something like moving across screen? Um, and this I got, and I was surprised that it actually looked good. <laughs> this slip scene, again, really simple effect, and something that I try and use a lot. There was a lift door opening and closing as part of the original footage. What I did, first of all, was um, posterize time, which I know sounds very sci-fi-like, but it's literally just effects in Premiere Pro. Um, which means you can adjust the frame rate. And then what I did, I went frame by frame and added a mask layer to kind of extend it outwards so it looks like the lift doors are opening onto the video itself. So the lift doors are opening onto the lift and what Liv is doing into the lift. So yeah, 
that's the elevator or the lift. I both, I guess. With this effect, again, post-rise time's there as well, so it's 12.5 frames per second. And I had the echo effect. It was the same clip overlaid, and then there was the, a delay to it. If I raised my hand now, um, the echo effect would raise my hand yeah, at a later date, and then again and again and again. You can affect how many echoes there are, how long the delay is, and stuff like that. This is the very first effect, I guess you could say, apart from like the screen stretching out aspect ratio-wise, that you see in the video. That was an important effect to get um, because it's the very first thing that catches your eye. Like kind of like this otherworldly electronic, like looped up and broken in a way, tone and vibe. The reason I want to talk about these effects in particular, data motion, the echo, the push rise in time, the lift, um, like everything like that, is because they all come together in probably my favourite part of the video itself that I think just sums up the kind of tone that I wanted. Mm -hmm.